Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let me know in the comments down below what Santa has bought you on his sleigh. And yeah, there's a couple of very interesting news stories that's floating around the internet at the moment. I want to begin with a very interesting rumor concerning Narve 2X. And that is that we actually have a GPU which is going to be utilizing TSMC's 6NM process for this, actually. So um, many of you have heard of Narve 24 before. You may also recognize it from its Linux code name, which is Beige Gobi. And Narve 24 is going to be appealing to the lower range of the market. We actually have a leaked die shot of this GPU. This is courtesy of videocards.com. Doesn't it look rather pretty? Doesn't it look rather cute? The die size is actually really small. It's only 141 mm squared. And well, this means it's only got 1,024 shaders and a grand total of 16 compute units, at least according to all of the leaked specifications that we've seen. Now, a good portion of the dies for RDNA has always been, well, RDNA 2, just to be clear, has always been Infinity Cache. And here, the Infinity Cache is really shaved down. So, of course, for Narve 21, it was 128 megabytes. For Narve 23, it was 64 megabytes. Whereas for 24, it's just 16 megabytes. Of course, none of this is officially confirmed by AMD yet. But yeah, 16 megabytes is... It'll be interesting to see how game performance actually, well, performs. Given that the rumor is that the bus width is only going to be 64-bit with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now... To add to all of this, it's going to be produced on the TSMC 6NM process, which of course is basically an enhancement, a refinement, if you will, of the 7NM process. Now, personally, I've been hearing for quite some time that AMD will be releasing a plethora of 6NM products, and it does seem that this is going to be the case. We're going to be moving on to uh, an APU in just a moment. But I'm actually hearing that there's going to be a refresh of sorts of a lot of the RDNA 2 cards, which is going to probably be out next year. Now, I don't know if it's going to be Narve 21 or whether it's going to be the lower end SKUs, but basically they're going to kind of fill out, if you will, um, the product offering, I suppose, from the company as uh, Narve 31, 32, and so on are launched. And I guess it does kind of make sense because that way AMD can kind of balance its products across different nodes. And this does make sense with the shortages. Although I will say that there is a ton of conflicting information about that and what AMD's plans are. Like I've even heard that Narve 34 was a thing and then I heard it got cancelled. Then someone else told me, no, it is going to happen, but it's going to be significantly delayed. So yeah, it's, it's kind of up in the air. But... What is kind of curious, and I mentioned an APU in just a moment ago, many have heard of Rembrandt. Now, Rembrandt, of course, is going to be based on the Zen 3 architecture, Zen 3 Plus, to be precise. And we actually have some leaks for the Ryzen 9 6900, nice, HX. This is courtesy of WCCF Tech, so of course, I'll leave a link to that article in the video description. Now, this particular GPU, um, which is inside the 6900HX, actually has its own name. It's the Radeon RX 680M. And while we don't have full specifications of this yet, allegedly Rembrandt actually goes up to 12 compute units, which is quite a lot of performance, to be honest with you. Furthermore, we still have 8 cores, 16 threads, and the L3 cache is going to be a grand spanking total of 16 megabytes. And of course, a total of 4 megabytes of L2 cache. Now, this GPU is allegedly going to clock to up to 4.6 gigahertz, which is actually pretty impressive when you think about it. Now, as I mentioned, uh, WCCF Tech have also linked, uh, leaked a roadmap as well, and you can see it on screen. This APU, though, will also bring another significant advantage, not just the fact it's RDNA 2 based rather than Vega, but it will have a significantly more memory bandwidth to play with because it supports DDR5 memory, up to 4800. So obviously that's going to be a lot of additional memory bandwidth to play with. Recently, I was testing out the Ryzen 5600G, um, thanks to AMD and CyberPower. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description. And yeah, I mean, the 5600G has an awful lot of potential. You can kind of see that, you know, APUs in the future, 
very, 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 very likely will basically take the place of low-end um, GPUs because there's just so much compute power that they offer. And a good number of users, sure, if you're playing the latest Doom or whatever, and you want to play at 4K, 120 frames a second or whatever, then obviously you're going to need a high-end GPU, right? But a good number of people, especially for lighter tasks, they just don't need that, especially when power consumption of other stuff is a thing. So this product, as well as the 6500 um, that I mentioned a moment ago, we're going to probably see these at CES 2022. I'm really curious to see what AMD and Intel and the rest of the companies announce. Obviously, NVIDIA are rumored to be uh, announcing a whole host of new GPUs as well. So I am super, super hyped for CES. I think it's going to be really kind of exciting. That's my that's my hope anyway. And speaking of Intel, there is actually a couple of nuggets of gold that Raja Kodori himself has dropped. I'll leave a link to the live stream where he took part of um, with a YouTuber by the name of Dr. Lupo. Now, basically, this was kind of a sponsored interview, and it is worth noting that there wasn't a whole litany of really tough questions. Unfortunately, it was a sponsor. Although the thing is, when you kind of have people um, in those kind of interviews, a lot of the time you do kind of get told what you can and can ask them. And it's not like, oh, you know, this is sponsored, so here's the questions. And it's kind of like, no, they. a lot of the time it's just like, we can't talk about this or we're not ready to discuss this. And honestly, it's happened to me. It's happened to pretty much anyone that you've ever watched these interviews with. So it's not really surprising. It's probably not necessarily that Intel don't want the hard questions. It's just that they're not ready to reveal key details, especially when you think of how close they are to CES and also the fact that, of course, they are ultimately otherwise giving information to their competitors. And I will say in Intel's GPU plans, they are actually being pretty open. Anyway, as I said, he was taking part as Raja Kodori, who is actually a really cool guy. Um, I met him during my time at GDC, which was really cool. And uh, yeah, so Raja basically was discussing several things regarding Intel's Arc GPUs. The first, and I particularly find this interesting, it seems to be confirming what I've heard, and that is that Intel are working on multiple hardware generations simultaneously, including ones that are ahead of things. So we have Battlemade, Celestial, and Druid, but also on different layers of software. I want to pause on the software there and talk about the GPUs. For those who aren't familiar with what I've said previously, I heard um, that Intel are not going to have the first generation of Arc um, on store shelves for super long before a replacement is out. Now, I've heard around eight to nine months before they will launch uh, kind of generation two, and then maybe a year after that is going to be Generation 3. And it does make sense because, again, we're hearing Gen 1 basically goes up to mm, around 3070 Ti performance. I have heard the ray tracing performance of these GPUs is really good, but I can't get a solid answer if it's better like-for-like like than NVIDIA. I probably would be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was because it's a later architecture, but honestly, who knows? Furthermore, he also, that is Raja, mentioned that there's different software layers and he said that one of these is going to be the ability to grant access to gpus remotely so for example uh, he used the example of cyberpunk so let's say your pc is equipped with an arc gpu and in the future unfortunately he didn't mention exactly when this is coming it seemed that it's not coming at launch he basically teases it's going to be later in 2022 so whether it's the first generation of arc that supports this whether it's going to be the second generation, whether it's going to be throughout the product line, it's still a little unclear. But basically, you will be able to remotely utilize, uh, sorry, remotely lend out your computing power to your friend. It kind of seems a little bit like, say, GeForce Now, um, if you're familiar with that, or of course, Steam Link, but a little different in its operation. With Steam Link, for example, obviously you need, well, uh, games on Steam. And this seems like it will just work regardless so that's pretty cool and obviously geforce now well games need to unfortunately be supported by geforce now and some companies are a little 
Picky, let's go with Picky. <laughs> Having their games run on it, which to me is kind of a pain in the ass. I have to say that I've I have tried a Geofern. I've got the press login. I mentioned this, and I actually was testing it just recently in a, another video where I was trying a more fine um, mini PC, and I was testing out an RTX 3080, you know, GeForce Now tier, and I have to say, it's really cool. I'm probably gonna be doing some more GeForce Now testing. But as for availability, Kodori also said that the manufacturing of Arc is, of course, gonna be on TSMC, but he doesn't think that the GPU shortage is gonna be alleviated anytime soon. He thinks this is gonna be still stuff that they're gonna be facing, but, he said, and this I find particularly interesting, he basically insinuated that their goal at the moment is not financial, but to basically gain the install base. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've been saying this for a long time. I've been hearing the pricing is really competitive for the GPUs. The only thing is, I heard actually there might even be a thing where they pretty much sell the product at possibly a loss or maybe break even. The only issue is that now Raja essentially, uh, Intel Graphics essentially is its own company and Raja is essentially responsible for its own PNL. So the issue is, it's gonna be interesting to see how this kind of looks on their books. Anyway, um, he confirms though that Intel will be developing their own solutions for blockchain operations. So basically mining, but these are not going to be the same as gaming GPUs, although he didn't really clarify how this works. And of course, this potentially could still eat into TSMC allocation, but maybe it's on a different process node or maybe they manufacture their own blockchain, um, you know, with their own manufacturing processes, who honestly knows? So it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this ends up. I'm kind of curious, to be honest, to see how Intel's plans on, you know, I, I don't know, for me, it's just going to be cool because I, I love the idea of another competitor in the arena. I think it's going to be pretty cool. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. And if you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video. And I will see you soon. By the way, apologies for perhaps a little bit of additional background noise at the moment. I'm not in my own place because uh, I'm away for a couple of days on the holidays. But normal service uh, will return the next few days. Well, as normal as I can be anyway. Let's just be honest, guys. Let's be honest. But with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.